course, that's where socialism leads. Now, Jack, you wanted to say something about this picture, I believe, yeah. and about the socialists. Yeah. Name there. I looked it up in Webster's Dictionary. It begins with socialism, then it becomes Marxism, Leninism, uh, they become Bolshevism, Bolsheviks, and finally it all ties together. It's really one communism, and you're going to hear something shocking now. Going on here, I'd like for you to see a picture of one of the representatives in the House, Representative Alan West. He is from Florida, and this is what he has to say. Lawmaker calls 78 to 81 Democrats communists. All right, he says he has proof of that. Communist Party USA endorses Obama again. Now, in June uh, 2011 edition of People's World, the official organ of Communist Party USA has formally endorsed Barack Obama for the president once Catholic again. Catholic Family News. Yes, that's from them. Now, let me just say this. You've seen that word Messiah referring to Barack Obama, our president. Do you really believe that anybody could meet the qualifications that the Bible explicitly expresses could meet the qualifications to be called the Messiah like Jesus Christ was the Messiah, Jack. No, here's why. Ecclesiastes 7, verse 20, There is not one just man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not. Isaiah 53, 6, All we like sheep have gone astray. Romans 3, 10, As it is written, There is none righteous, no, not one. And Romans 3.23 says, All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Jesus, oh, he knew no sin. 2 Corinthians 5.21, he did no sin. 1 Peter 2.22, he is holy, harmless, undefiled, and separate from sinners. Hebrews 7.26, and as he stood here in this earth, he said, Which of you can convince me of one sin that I've ever committed? John 8, 46, he was a holy God, the Son of God. Amen. Amen, Jack. I was quite surprised the other day when Jack and I were talking. The word Messiah is only found twice in the Bible, twice. That surprised me. But there are other names to be applied to the Mighty One. And uh, I'm going to give those names to Jack, and he'll back this up. All right, Jack? The first one is God, God. No problem with that one. The Bible says in Romans 9, 5, Christ came who is over all God, blessed forever. First Timothy 3, 16, great is the mystery of godliness that God was manifest in the flesh. First John 5, 20, we have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. All right, not only was he divine, but he was the Son of God. The Son of yeah. God, Jack. And see, that's where Islam goes wrong. They say if any man preaches that Jesus is the Son of God, he'll burn in hell forever. Well, there's something wrong with that statement. That's the Quran. Let's see what God's holy word, the Bible, has to say. The Lord Jesus looked at the Apostle Peter in Matthew chapter 16, verse 15. And he said, Peter, who do you say I am? He said, you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen and amen. He said, all oh, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And he says, on this rock, your statement that I am the Son of the living God, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall never prevail against it. Jesus is the Son of God. It's mentioned 91 times. You remember when... Gabriel appeared to Mary in Luke 1, 32 through 35. He said, Your son shall be great. He shall be called the son of the highest, and he shall sit upon the throne of his father David. And she said, How shall this be that I'll have a son? I know not a man. And he said, The Holy Spirit shall come upon you, and that holy thing which shall be born of you shall be called the Son of God. And 1 John 2, 22 says, Whosoever says that Jesus is not the Son of God is an Antichrist. Your Quran's wrong. All right. He was virgin born. Yeah. Virgin born. And then the last, the third thing that I have down, uh, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Jack. He's coming back to rule and reign. And the Old Testament says it. Psalm 2, 6, 
Yahweh God says, I'll set my king upon the holy hill of Jerusalem. Sing and rejoice, O you daughters of Jerusalem, for lo, I will come and dwell among you. And Isaiah 59, 20 says, the Redeemer shall come to Jerusalem. Oh, it just goes on and on. And Zechariah 14, 4, his feet hit the Mount of Olives as he comes to set up that kingdom forever and forever here on earth. And that's the New Testament in Revelation 19, 11, when he comes regally on that white horse as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, verse 16. And as I said earlier, to rule and reign for a thousand years. And he's also excelled as the Savior of the world, First John 4, 14. And we're looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, nobody can take the place of our Savior coming back. How wonderful to look forward to the divine Lord Jesus coming in those clouds. Now, since our president took office, there have been some things that we've all wondered about. The Wall Street Journal and anti-Israel president, woo! And this is the world that daily most biblically hostile president ever is, of course, of Barack Obama. Now, I have here in my hand something, acts of preferentialism for Islam. Rex I Jack hold is. six pages here, 50 different things where he caters to them instead of the Christian. All right, there has to be somebody that can, can cater to everybody and put them all together. We're going to go back and forth here on some that Jack has chosen. Now, on May uh, 2009, while Obama does not host any National Day of Prayer event of the White House, he does host White House dinners in honor of Ramadan, all right? April 2010, Christian leader Franklin Graham is disinvited from the Pentagon's National Day of Prayer event because of complaints from the Muslim community because he griped about 9-11. Who wouldn't? April 2010, the Obama administration requires rewriting of government documents and a change in administrative vocabulary to remove terms that are deemed offensive to Muslims, including jihad, jihadist, terrorist, radical Islamic, and so forth. Can't call them what they are, Rexella. August 2010, Obama speaks with great praise of Islam and condescendingly of Christianity. August 2010, Obama went to great lengths to speak out on multiple occasions on behalf of building an Islamic mosque at Ground Zero, while at the same time he was silent about a Christian church being denied permission to rebuild at that location. 2010, while every White House traditionally issues hundreds of official proclamations and statements on numerous occasions, this White House avoids traditional biblical holidays and events, but regularly recognizes major Muslim holidays. Now, just this last October, Obama's Muslim advisors block Middle Eastern Christians access, access to the White House. How about all of this? Oh, Rexel, you know what we're to do? We can't join them. It's wrong. Can two walk together except they be a great Amos 3.3? 3. Romans 16, 17, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you've received and avoid them, President Obama. Not push them, promote them over Christianity. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, Ephesians 5, 11, and come out from among them and be a separate, 2 Corinthians 6, 18. Amen. Now, Jack, there is a Savior. The Savior is coming back very, very soon. Are you ready? Have you opened your heart to Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world? He wants to be your Savior. He died for you. He'll take away your sins. Oh, Jack, give the invitation, please. Oh, this Jesus is so precious. I love him, and I want you to love him. He loved you so much. He suffered so agonizingly when his blood flowed from his body as he died for your sins. And you can be forgiven today. Look at me, please. Jesus, Savior of the world, thank you for dying for me to take away my sins. And Jesus, today I lay all my burdens and sins on you, and I ask you to come into my heart and save me. In your name, precious Jesus, amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer with Jack, will you write me? There's my address. I'll send you this wonderful little booklet, First Steps in a New Direction. The Lord came in. He's your Savior. Now, friends, I want to refer once again to our wonderful new offer, Awake America. Here's the preview. Take a look.
Awake, citizens of the world. The four horsemen of the apocalypse are about to ride. They include the infamous Antichrist and his irreligious cohort, the blasphemous false prophet, who together produce wars and rumors of wars, including Armageddon, the international battle of history, producing atomic warfare, famines, and pestilential plagues. Secular scholars, historians, and prominent journalists, including Henry Kissinger, Ted Koppel, Newt Gingrich, Charles Crothammer, and Cal Thomas, unitedly warn the world's citizens of rapidly approaching catastrophe. Presently, plans are being laid by global leaders for the spectacular and rapid rise of the New World Order, and one world religion is predicted by the leaders of Islam, Judaism, and Christianity, using the Quran and the Judeo-Christian Bible to promote their final warnings. What part will the doomsday date, December 21st, 2012, proclaimed hundreds of years ago in the Mayan, Aztec, I Ching, and Web Bop prophecies play in the startling and intriguing scheme of international events? Find out by ordering doctors Jack and Rex Sullivanampi's dynamic video study, Awake America, the world's final warning. Awake America! We've been warned that there's so many things going on in the world concerning America. We are asleep. Everything we've talked about today is on here and so much more that we want to share with you. And now here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Chuck? My friend, to order your copy of Awake America, the world's final warning on DVD or VHS. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jock Van Empey Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jock Van Empey Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now back to Rex Ellis. Thank you so much, Chuck, and I just want to say that there's so much on here we can't get in every single week. What does the Bible say about the world ending in 2012? Will more devastating catastrophes strike in 2012? You know, so many tornadoes and hurricanes out there. And what about the anti-Christian persecution? We'll talk about that in the days ahead, but it's on here. Awake America. Make the call. There's the 800 number. There's the address. We'll get it in the mail for you. You know, so often we get a tear in our eye, don't we, when we think about what's happening in the world. It's all right to have a tear in your eye if you have hope in your heart. You can have hope in your heart if you have the Lord there. We'll look forward to being in your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye.